seeds and nuts are generally fatty and fatty acids are very easily oxidized, destroyed by free radicals. And more importantly than that, the nut or the seed, like your sperm or a woman's o oocyte is the next generation. If that seed is not protected, that will not germinate and theoretically, that species would become no longer existent. If pistachios have the highest concentration, and certainly the data that has been published, there's only that one report that I know, it makes sense because the, the this plant, the pistachio tree can survive in the most arid conditions. It can have an extreme environments, and we know in plants that melatonin, and maybe even in animals, melatonin can be upregulated. If you take a plant, virtually any plant, and now hundreds have been tested, and put them in a stressful environment like a drought or extra heat or cold, what they immediately do is upregulate their melatonin to practice protect them from that damage. And that, we recently wrote an article, for example, the global warming, if you buy into that, that's again, opinion that different people have. If global warming is persistent, it is obvious that plants or food crops such as rice Certain strains of rice do not do well, even with an average increase of nighttime temperatures by two degrees. And we just suggested recently that to overcome that issue, we'll have to start genetically engineering plants to produce more melatonin to protect against that excess heat at night. And I think that's a I think that's something that will, will seriously be done. Several plants have already been genetically engineered to increase their melatonin content. There's one strain of microtom tomato. There's a couple of strains of rice. But I think we're going to see more and more of that because melatonin really protects plants from adverse environmental conditions. This has been documented thousands of times. Uh, what is interesting about melatonin plants, the discovery of melatonin plants did not come until 1995, which much after, uh, and uh, I don't know if you know this, but it was my lab that discovered melatonin plants. We are animal biologists, but we happen to have a couple, of, I happen to have a couple of postdocs that were playing around with plants, and we discovered two papers, we published two papers in 1995. For 10 years, that data was totally overlooked. People said, ah, they're not melatonin plants. Last year, 2021, there were more publications on plant melatonin than there were on animal and human melatonin. This has become a major, major, major field. And I'm still involved in it because I collaborate with a lot of scientists around the world on, on plant studies. A plant melatonin is making big strides in in terms of agricultural applications. And I think it will continue. I think it'll be somewhat of a lifesaver for a lot of plants, because if we can genetically engineer and produce more melatonin, which we have suggested in several publications, I think we'll be able to save some of the, what, what seems to be of importance for a lot of plants is the nighttime temperature. Daytime temperatures seem to be somewhat more tolerable, but if it's too warm at night, they seem to falter. And that's and and there's where I think we can plants can really benefit from having more melatonin.